Today we have a new server rack battery by SOK, but this is very different than everything else. This one does not have a screen, does not have communication, but it comes at a very low price. This is just a battery, some terminals, a breaker, and that is it. So if you're trying to build a large system and get the most capacity for the money, this is probably the way to go. Their price will be dependent on the sell price. So if the sales get cheaper, they're gonna lower the price, and if the sales get more expensive, they will raise the price. But they're trying to make the lowest cost server rack battery on the market but with high quality components. This is actually the same price as a lot of cheap Chinese 12 volt batteries on Amazon, but it's made by SOK. And the difference in price adds up. Their more expensive model is $300 more. And if you're buying 20 of these, that's a lot of money. Now this BMS does not have current regulation like the more expensive batteries, and it doesn't have a pre-charge resistor circuit. So you're gonna have to do that on your own. Now, because this BMS does not have the current regulation and pre-charge resistor circuit, they had to beef up the BMS. So it can handle 150 amps, but they're derating it to 80 amps so that this will last a long time. And they even did dead short tests to ensure that it can actually handle it. So now let's open it up and see what the internal build quality is like. Whew. And look at this. Oh, wow. So this is an SOK BMS. They make the BMS and their other batteries, their 12 volt models, and this is very similar. And all of the plugs are glued, but this one has electrical tape. I do not like that. And there's only two temperature sensors. We have one right here and one right here. Most other server rack batteries that are more expensive are gonna have four. Let's test to see if these things work. Let's get some cold water because this is a new BMS, so we should test the basic features. So right now we're charging with 20 amps. We're gonna stick the sensor in some ice water. And there we go. That was just a couple seconds. Let's heat it up. Now we're charging again. This is also a different balance cable than their other battery because obviously it has a different BMS. We're gonna dunk this one in salt water. And there we go, zero. Now let's heat it up. And now we're charging, so they both work. Now we're gonna test the high temperature. And it works. Now because this is the same BMS as the 12 volt batteries, these have an extremely low failure rate. I think out of like 10,000, they had two or three that have problems. So these are pretty reliable. And the connections are good and every screw I've taken apart has been super tight. Now something that people like about SOK batteries is that they're serviceable. The 12 volt ones, the server rack ones, all of these bus bars you can remove from the cells and pull this thing out in about 20 minutes. And all you need is a screwdriver. There's no special sizes here. It's just a bunch of little screws. And if there's BMS failure, you could swap it out in a few minutes. It would be a pain to take off all this glue, but you could easily do it. It's not hard. Also, the breaker is rated for DC use. It does not say it on the faceplate like other breakers that are on server rack batteries. But if you look at the data sheet, it has a DC rating. And I haven't found anything that is loose. It looks pretty darn good. And these are some thick bus bars too. Those are pure copper. An SOK battery has the strongest cell holders available. I always tell people if you're in a high vibration environment, these are probably the best you can get. If you want this to be waterproof, you could seal it or you could just throw it into a bag. It would not be that hard to do actually, especially with less holes on the faceplate, like all the other server racks have all of those little holes, those communication ports, but this would be a lot easier to waterproof. They should make a waterproof a budget server rack battery, that would be pretty sweet. I mean, just seal the lid and then seal these corners and that's it. Oh, and the breaker, you'd have to seal this, but these are waterproof, so that would be pretty neat. Now, as I film this video, this battery is $1,349. The price is subject to change depending on the price of sales. But the main competition that this has is the EG4 budget battery, the Life Power 4. And yes, that's the name. I don't like saying it because I don't want to confuse beginners with lithium iron phosphate. But the EG4 Life Power 4 is this battery's main competitor. And with EG4's Father's Day sale, they're selling it for $1,399. So $50 more than this. But theirs has communication in a state of charge indicator. It does not have a screen 
but you might want that. That's actually pretty good for the price. You spend 50 bucks and you get all of those features. But the terminals are smaller. This one can accommodate a four out gauge cable. This one cannot. And personally, I like these larger terminals. Even if I'm using a bus bar, I prefer big beefy terminals. And this does not have Bluetooth. This one does. So all the special features that this one can do, you can access by using a Bluetooth app. But the state of charge indicator is more convenient. So it's tough. These are definitely neck and neck. I mean, it really depends on what you need. So it's really up to you. Lots of pros and cons, but it's nice to see some competition. This thing has needed some competition for a long time. No one's been able to beat them yet. Also, this is sold by Current Connected and a lot of people like them. They also have bundle deals with Solarx and Victron. So you might like that if you're building a large like Victron system. I wonder if the warranty is different. Let me look that up. So five year warranty for the EG4 and the SOK is seven years through Current Connected. So man, that's tough. Which one would you guys buy? I wanna hear what you guys think in the comments section. Now I'm trying to think about what I would do. I like both. I would probably get a stack of EG4s so I have communication. So if I buy an inverter that needs that, I could have that stack and then buy another stack of these because they're a lower price. And something I don't know is how long those EG4 batteries are on sale for. After the sale, when the price goes up, these might be a lot cheaper by a hundred dollars or more. So I have no idea. If you're buying a lot of batteries, that would actually change the whole situation entirely. Or you could buy a lot of these and have one or two expensive SOK server racks if you need the communication as well. And those work with everything pretty much. So Solar, Victron, everything. So man, that is an option as well. Or you could buy a lot of these because they're a lower price and then buy a couple of the more expensive SOKs, put it in parallel, and then you'll have the communication as well. But if you want that cheap capacity, this is the best option for capacity for the money. And there's a possibility that these will go down in price even more if the sell prices keep dropping and which they will eventually. So that is something else to keep in mind. Maybe the EG4 might drop in price soon. I don't know. But yeah, this is definitely some competition for EG4. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. I love how we finally have an option because EG4 was just dominating the space at that price point and now we have an option. So I'm gonna put this back together and build a system with it. I have another one in my shop and I'm gonna show you that system because it's really cool. And then we'll do some charge and discharge testing and we'll see if there's any issues that we can find. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.